Good morning and thank you for joining us in our worship today on this fourth Sunday of Lent and happy Mother's Day as well. Mary Ann Evans said, life began with waking up and loving my mother's face. So may God bless you this Sunday and an extra special blessing for all you mothers. Let's listen then to our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, Pilgrim Through This Barren Land. join our hearts in prayer let's pray together almighty god loving father son and holy spirit creator of the universe creator of the galaxies stars and planets creator of the earth our home this beautiful colored jewel of our solar system and so as we praise with our lips may we praise you with our hearts we thank you for the hope we have in Christ Jesus our Lord and as we journey ever closer to Easter and the sorrow of his death you give us hope with the joy of Easter Sunday Lord we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ albeit virtually to worship you to offer our praise and thanksgiving that in you we find life as we drink from the wells of salvation. We come in the midst of so many difficulties in the world, so much uncertainty. May we rest in you as we give ourselves in our worship. Father, we turn now to seek your loving forgiveness. Forgive our thoughts, words and deeds which are unkind, unloving, ungracious, unforgiving. Hear us now as we confess our sins to you. Lord, in your tender mercy, you have heard our prayers, forgiven our sins and cleansed our hearts through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord. Holy Spirit, please grace us with your presence as we continue in our worship. For these things we pray for the sake of and for the love of Jesus, our Lord, 
and further pray together the prayer he taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Turn now to the scriptures, to the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, where we read, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word for us this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. These words are often quoted when we are trying to make sense of life, of the world around us. Things happen in the world or our own lives and we wonder why, what's going on. And on the one hand, we know that natural disasters happen because the earth breathes, creating weather that sometimes can be devastating or causing volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, tsunamis. We also know that much suffering is caused by people's inhumanity to each other. Hatred, greed, violence, oppression, etc. Or sin, as the Bible calls it. So on the one hand, we know why things happen. The difficulty for people of faith who believe in God is, where is he in all this? Or more specifically, where is the God of love and compassion? We try to make sense of it. But it's not easy, and so we might hear these words quoted. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And we mean, in, although we don't understand why, God knows why, because he sees the whole picture. Now, ultimately, I do believe that as much as we'd like to fully understand God, our creator, we can't. And this is not a cop out. It's just how it is. If God brought all things into being, then there must be a vast gulf between his knowledge and ours, between his understanding of things and our understanding. It's very difficult for a child to make sense of the world of parenthood. Most young children only want their own way and they can't see beyond that to the logic of their parents. So they often think their parents have been unfair or unkind. They can't see that their parents have the best interests at heart. 
there's a huge gulf between a child's knowledge and the knowledge of the parents. But as a child can know its parents, even if it doesn't understand everything, we can know God, even though we don't understand everything about him either. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. As true as that may be, I wouldn't quote those words to someone who was asking, why did my child die? Why did my husband die so young, leaving me with young children? You see, often when we ask why, we're expressing our grief, our pain, our confusion, and our bewilderment. So to quote that scripture, I don't think would be very helpful. In fact, the context of these words of scripture are very different than the context they're often used for. These words are not given as an answer to suffering, but as a call to the spiritually thirsty. It's a call to the unrighteous and a call even to the wicked to repent, to return back to God and he will show them mercy and forgiveness. He won't treat them as they would treat each other. For, as he says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. When Jesus walked the earth, this was his message. Repent, return to God. And Jesus, as we know, was criticised for being in the company of sinners, the unrighteous. But his ways were not the ways of his critics. His thoughts were not their thoughts. This is the true context of those words of Isaiah embodied in Christ our Lord. It's known as the time of the Lord's favour for all. Today's reading begins, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. We see here then this great invitation to come to the Lord. An invitation offered to everyone to come and drink from the living waters of salvation. When my wife and I were young, we traveled overland to India and back and going there, we really enjoyed uh, Afghanistan, especially Kabul, which was a fantastic city. And so when we're traveling overland on the way back, uh, we had an extra week in Afghanistan. This was in early 1978. And we were in a shop and another lady came in. She happened to be an American woman. And uh, she was with the American Peace Corps. And we had a chat and just before we parted, she invited us to a party. And she wrote down the address and said, you know, uh, if you want to, you can come to the party. So we iffed and awed about whether to go or not. We hadn't, by then we got no decent clothes. We were a bit bedraggled. We wouldn't know anybody. Uh, but despite our reservations, we went. Well, we got there and we entered through uh, a wooden door into a huge courtyard. And it was filled with people from all over the world. And we were welcomed like honoured guests. And we never once felt awkward. And there were professional chefs cooking food from various parts uh, of the world, from different countries. There was food 
that we could not afford on our meagre budget. Food we had longed for for quite a while. And there was as much as anybody could eat. It was an amazing night. And how glad we were that we had accepted that invitation. When we were invited to that party, our first thought was to look at ourselves. Our clothes weren't good enough. We might feel awkward. It felt like an effort. And would the effort be worth it? We couldn't really imagine that we would have a good time. But how wrong we were on every count. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. You will delight in the richest of fare. How good is that? My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. We can apply these words to the mystery of God. There are things I don't understand, so I will leave them with him. That's certainly one way we can interpret these words. I wouldn't, though, quote them to someone going through something like bereavement. But in the context of the passage, I believe that here God is saying, whatever you think you know of yourself, whatever you think you know of me, you will find that I am completely different than all your thoughts and ways. I'm not out to get you, but I am out to love you. So I invite you to come. Come to me, come to the waters, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks this day for the invitation to come to the waters, to drink freely from the wells of salvation, to turn to you whether we feel worthy or not. We thank you that even when we show no mercy, forgiveness or grace to one another, you are willing to show it to us when we turn to you, for your ways are higher than our ways. And we pray that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, our ways may be transformed into your ways. We think of Mozambique this day, so much suffering being caused by the wickedness of man. How we wish they would repent and turn from their evil ways. We pray for help to stem the violence and help to feed the hungry. And Lord, 10 years of madness in Syria, will this suffering ever end? Help us, we pray. When we lie on our bed, when sleep eludes us, when worries and anxieties, shame and regrets, fears and sorrows, when they overwhelm the garden of our minds with thorns and briars, may we remember you and dwell on your goodness and mercy. Lord, we accept your invitation to come to the waters, and we ask that you would revive and refresh us in our weariness. We ask that you would give us assurance in our bewilderment and confusion. Give us light in our darkness, and give us faith in our doubt. We give you thanks for our mothers, for the love they give and the love they gave us throughout our lives. 
And Father, bless them, we pray. For these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The invitation made in the passage from the Old Testament from Isaiah. It's made by Jesus in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, where we read, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and he said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from deep within them. My friends, those words are literally true. Our final hymn is, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Oh, life, I walk till traveling.
you go through the coming week, may you know the presence of God and drink freely from the wells of salvation. May God bless you all. Amen.